Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Coach Renz, and today we're going to talk about love, because love is in the air. It's spring, so love is in the air. It's sundress season in the south and across most of the country, so love is in the air. Now, what is love? What is love? And I want to thank everybody for joining me, for subscribing to the channel, the pages, um, Whichever medium, if you get it on Facebook or if you're getting this on YouTube, thank you for subscribing. Continue to become a member of the page and thank you for joining. I appreciate you guys very much. Now, so what is love? And that's the question. Is love a, is love a feeling? Is it, an, is, is, it, it, is it an emotion? Couldn't get that out, right? Is it an emotion? Is it a thought? Is it a way of being? Like, what is love? How do we define love? How do you know that you are in love or you have love? That's the question. And many of us define it differently and that's okay. But at the end of the day, there is something that is consistent concerning love. And this is the thing that most people will miss out on continuously. Now, last week on my Coach Ren's Facebook page, so go over there and join that one if you're not, I put a post out there where I said, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Now that's important. You are what you do, not what you say you will do and I broke that down in a whole description so go to my coach friends page and you'll be able to see everything I wrote about how you have to take actions and the actions you're taking is the time deciding who you are that decides who you are this action that you consistently take so how does that refer to love and what is the alchemical process of it the thing about love is that love is an action word and you've heard that before love is an action word you can see love in a person's action a person will tell you that they love you over and over again, but you only believe it if their actions dictate it. But the problem is that you will allow for a person's actions to dictate only a portion that says that they love you, whereas the rest of their actions dictates the opposite. And you really should ask yourself, are they doing enough? If they truly love me, then why would they consistently do the things that pushes me away from them or that causes us to have problems, that causes problems and issues, that demonstrates a person who does not love you? I had this great conversation about that this weekend with some friends of mine, some old friends and new friends. And one of the things that we agreed upon wholeheartedly is the fact that love is a purpose-driven action a decision you make every day, every moment. Now, I know that doesn't sound romantic. I know that doesn't sound all, oh, but love is not that. Love is not the fairy tale that you've been, get, you've been given. It is not that you locked eyes across the room and he or she came across sultry, looking divine and sexy and caused your eyes to flutter and your heart to pound a little bit harder. You found yourself short of breath because what was before you was something so amazing you've never seen before. You looked at her and you thought, man, I've known you my whole life and yet I've only just met you. This must be love. No, it's infatuation or lust. It's one of those two. Because it's an initial gut feeling that you just had. It's an initial attraction that you just had. Now, if you meet that person, and you want that person to have that, you don't want to not have that. But when you meet that person, they have that. And then you get to know their mind. Then you get to see their habits. And then you see how they treat you. That starts to make you feel like you're in love with them. But then the honeymoon phase is over. You go into this rut of living, this complacency. All of a sudden, those things that you did in the beginning, those things they did in the beginning, they're not doing them anymore, but yet they still claim that they love you. All of a sudden, now there are other aspects of who they are, their personality is coming out, but they claim that they love you. Do they? Do they really love you? No. They like you a lot. They care about you. But they don't love you. They don't love you. There's a lot of marriages out there that we say is love because of longevity. We say it's love because we see them on Facebook. Hell, I was one of them. You saw everything on Facebook, it looked grand, it looked glorious, it looked like it was a love affair to end all love affairs. But what was going on behind the scenes was a totally different story. It's been a few relationships that I've been in like that, so don't just think one, it's been a few. 
This is why I love transparency. Because I want you to know that not all relationships, not all my relationships have been like this glorious honey moons phase thing all the time. That there were issues. But I wanted you to see the changes or what needed to be done in order to correct those issues. You see, love is a purpose-driven decision every day. Every day you have to decide that I understand what my person's love language is and I'm going to pursue that actively every day. I understand what causes them to be to feel like they're in paradise, like they're in heaven, that they're in Shangri-La, that they have a refuge to come to. Let me do that every day, consistently every day. You see, it's a decision that you make to be what's needed in order to make the relationship function. And when you see that there is something about you that is out of balance, because that's what your arguments, that's what your discontent with one another is. That's what your sexless relationship is. It is you and the other person being out of frequency with each other. So when you see that you need to come into frequency, once again, do you recognize what you are doing that's creating the dysfunction? If you're coming home every day and you're putting your shoes in the wrong place and it and just putting your shoes in the wrong place causes the person to feel like the house needs to be take, kept up or the shoes should go in a certain place for whatever their rationale their reason is but you keep doing it and it later causes aggravation um, with around dinner time and then there's some more aggravation and more aggravation and now you're having a huge argument and the only reason you're having it is because you won't put your shoes up they told you, they've asked you many times, they've many times, could you put your shoes up? Could you put your shoes up? There's a, I, I got a whole coat rack thing, shoe rack thing for your shoes. Can you put your shoes up? Can you not walk around the house in your shoes? You've been asked, you've been asked, you've been asked, but as many times as they ask you, you just don't. I, I just grew up this way. I just grew up where we just came in and we walked around the house with our shoes. I, I, we didn't have a shoe rack to put them in. What's the big deal? You know, that's just how I am. I had, I, had a, I had a wife or a husband that was always on me about that in my previous relationship, and I don't want to have that in this relationship. So I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that, but, but I'm coming to you peacefully out of love, asking you to do that for me. I'm not trying to control you, I'm not trying to dominate you. It causes me a disturbance so that I can't connect with you. You see, you got to be the kind of person that when you hear that, when you recognize that, you change it. Is you, you let go of your pride. You let go of your trauma. And, and let's hit that for a second. Many of you are experiencing the ebbs and flows of relationships simply because you are still holding on to your pride or you are holding on to past traumas and inflicting that pride or past traumas on your mate. You're doing it through methods of control. You're doing it through methods of anger. You're doing it through uh, methods of using sex as a weapon. You're, you're using all types of mechanism to punish the other person, the person that you're with, because of what somebody else did in the past. Because you're guarding yourself. You're making sure that you stay guarded. You're making sure that you don't lose anything. Here's the thing about loss. I've had this, and I've lost this. I've had it, and I've lost it. You can regain anything. I've had love affairs and I've lost them. I've had them and I've lost them. You can regain anything. You can. We have such a fear of loss that sometimes the fear of loss creates the very mechanism that causes us to lose. You understand that? That your fear of loss creates the mechanism that causes you to lose. If you have fear of a mate controlling you, so your way of, con of, of fixing that is to control them, you're going to lose them. If a person gave you trauma about how you took care of them or how you took care of the house or how you, you know, did something with your month, took care of your money and you utilize that and now you want to go opposite that. Now you want to be free flowing in all those areas. But here's a person that you say you love can't be in that environment and it's easy to change, but you decide not to change it, you are allowing the past trauma to prevent you from having this new relationship that has no connect connection. But yes, there are similarities, but is the information coming across the same? Just because your previous mate complained about something you did or something you're not doing, and this person makes the same objection, 
that person yelled and screamed, came at you angrily. This person comes at you with love, explaining how if we take care of this, how much better our lives will be. Maybe you shouldn't hold on to that past trauma and invoke it on this next person. That's going to create a separation between the two of you. And then you're going to go around saying, see, just like the last one. See, it keeps on happening. See, all these men, all these women are exactly the same. See, there's no good men, women out there. See, this is just what keeps happening to me. You are the catalyst that's causing it. And the moment you realize the portions of, that you are causing, you will do better. You know, we discussed over the weekend of how we have to be selfish about this thing. Selfish. I was having a discussion last night, matter of fact. And I was and in the discussion, what I was saying was, you should selfishly, selfishly, want to make your mate happy. Because if your mate is extremely happy, if you if your mate looks at you and sees their happiness in you, in your relationship, then they are going to want to have that as much as they possibly can. Now, if they understand, if they're mature enough and they understand that in order to have this all the time, in order for this honeymoon phase to never end, then I need to love her, him like this. I need to do this for them in order for them to do that for me. If you have the opportunity of that relationship, and you can, just by having a discussion and deciding you're going to be purposefully driven to dis to make this relationship be everything it needs to be. But when they say, when you say to that person, when you are doing, let me rephrase, when you are doing what that person needs so that they can give back to you what you desire, then you are doing it for your own selfish reason because you want to be happy and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it's an amazing, great thing to be selfish. I selfishly love an affectionate woman. So whatever she needs in order to continue to be affectionate towards me, she going to get. Right? I love a supportive woman. So whatever she needs in order for her to continue to be supportive towards me, she going to get. I love an active woman. So whatever she needs in order for me to, to give for her. Let me give you one. I'm just going to break that one out right here. Me and my brother have this discussion. Now, I'm throwing him under the bus a little bit. My brother has the mentality of splitting everything down the middle. He doesn't care how much love is in the room, in the house. He doesn't care from his past experiences. Everything is going to be split down the middle. My brother thinks that I'm a foolish man. That in my mind sight, in my, my, in my mind, I don't want my woman to have to work because I want her to have the energy to go. Because I'm a high energy person. I want her to have the energy to keep up, to keep going. Because I'll go out every night. I'll go try experiences. I can leave today, drive her two hours up the street, go for a hike, come back down, have lunch, um, you know, go do some work late on the night, go out for dinner, go listen to some live music, go to a cigar lounge, and then get home around 2, 3 in the morning, well, 1, 2, 3 in the morning, make love, and then get up again at 7 o'clock in the morning. Let's go. You know, that's me. If she got a 9 to 5, it's going to be hard to keep up with all of that. Um, she's going to be tired. <laughs> she's going to be tired. So my brother doesn't understand my mindset of I, I particularly don't care or nor desire for my wife to work. I don't. Um, if it's my preference, she would uh, be doing her own thing. You know, she would, uh, if it's another, if it's a business or if it's a hobbies or just interests that she pursues throughout her day. You know, if she's into music and yoga and poetry or pottery or whatever she's into. And even if she turns that and makes money off of it, that's fine. But financially, I am more than happy to support a woman. But in order for that woman to gain that, she has to demonstrate that she truly loves me. Otherwise, she not getting that. You got to act right to get that. But my brother doesn't understand that. But that's the difference, and that's okay. You don't have to do anything how any, anybody else. You don't have to do anything in the way that anybody else decides that you should. 
you do things that makes you happy. As long as you're not hurting somebody else, do what makes you happy. If that person is in agreement, then y'all do what makes you happy. You see, too many times people get into these relationships and they don't have the mindset. Now, you know, they, they know it. People have been t they've been told that a relationship is work, that you gotta put the work in. But they'll hold on to anger. They'll hold on to however they live in their home. They'll hold on to their family members and, and the negative impact they have in the relationship. They'll hold on to all these things. They'll hold on to some habits that are not good for them, but certainly not good for the relationship either. They'll hold on to those things and say, oh, you have to give me time. Oh, I'm working on it. Oh, I, I, I'm go I'll be better later. Oh, it'll turn when once I get to this point. Like I said, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. And they'll have these excuses and expect you to stay there and stay there and stay there. And like I've said before, if they're not um, marketable, increases, improvements. If I can't look and see that, okay, we argued damn near the whole month last month. This month, we only argued half the month. <laughs> gotta see some improvements. I mean, that's ridiculous no matter how you look at it, but I'm just saying, gotta have some improvements. If, 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 if the house is not organized or kept and it's just maintained that way, it's like, we just gonna keep living like this? Is this how you're gonna keep living? Or you, you, you claim that you want to do better, but you don't. We can't stay together, you know. Um, if you are always working, if a person is a workaholic and they're always working, they don't have time for their mate, you know, and, uh, after a month goes by and we still did the same three, four dates out of the month that we normally do, then there's no, in, there's no improvement. There's no improvement, you know. If they have health issues and they're not tackling those health issues, there's no improvement. No, no, no. Financially, they're not uh, doing what they said that they would do to grow their finances or to manage their finances better, better then there's no improvement. So that person is saying what they want to be, but they're not saying what they desire to be. What you desire to be is what you're going to go and be. But you are what you do. And if you're in the process of changing, then you truly have a desire to become better. Like I, I, got, I got a bit of a dad bod right now. Right? And I can say that I'm going to get rid of it. But if I don't go attack that mountain, if I don't go hit that gym, if I don't eat better, then I'm not actually trying to get rid of it. I'm just saying words that sound good. I just have a wanting of it. And the wanting of it is always keeping you in lack. But when I have a desire for it, it gets, it gets done. I go to the gym. I, I, if it wasn't for my knee, I'd be, in, I'd be hitting that mountain. Because dad by can't live, can't, can't, we, we can't do that. We do. And here's the biggest part, and then I'm gonna let you guys go. In order to love somebody truly, to make those changes, to be what's needed to be in a relationship, for all of that to occur, you gotta love yourself first. And I know you see people all over their social media talking about how much they love themselves and talking about how great life is and, and how they, you know, just experiencing nothing but greatness and they're in frequency and all this kind of thing. I know you go online, you see people all throughout your pages and they party and they having birthday bashes and looking like they are hugely celebratory of themselves. But what you don't know that person is lonely inside that person is hurting that person makes excuses and lies about who they are to themselves they make excuses and lie about what happened in their previous relationships to make themselves feel better when the truth of the matter is they didn't have enough love within themselves and didn't love themselves enough to do what's necessary to make that relationship work they didn't have enough of it within themselves to say that I'll be damned if I lose a good man or woman over a house. I'll be damned if I lose a good man or woman over a job. I'll be damned if I lose a good man or woman over who owns what. I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose a good man or woman over uh, my insecurities. I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose a good man or woman for any of those things. A person who loved themselves wouldn't do it and when that and now if you're on the other end of that 
Let me go ahead and say it before somebody say it. Well, if a good man and woman, they will stay there. No, they won't. Because the person who loves themselves is also not going to stay in an environment that will actually create a situation where they don't really love themselves. They're not going to stay in, in a violent environment. They're not going to stay in a controlling environment. They're not going to stay in a sexless environment. They're not going to stay in a uh, non-affectionate environment or non-supportive environment. They're not going to stay in an environment that is the antithesis of them loving themselves. They're not going to. That's actually a person who loves themselves truly. So say what you will, whichever side of this you're on, on different relationships or however things are in your life, the point of the matter is love yourself enough so that you're able to actually demonstrate love purposefully to whomever you're with. Because that's what it takes to have the alchemical mindset and to be able to raise your energy, to raise your kundalini to the point where you're, not only is your heart open, but your third eye and your crown is open so that you can truly fall, ah, I hate that term, rise in love with someone. So that you can truly rise in love with someone and be able to maintain it. You see, and for real, for real, this is the last thing. You see, in the Hermetics, we have the polarity. Now, if hating someone is on this end and loving someone is on this end, there are a million degrees in between. The problem is that most of us swing, and the law, and the law of rhythm has us swinging from left to, left to right, left to right, constantly swinging. Great love affair, then it crashes. Great love affair, then it crashes. But most of us are swinging in the middle. Protected love affair, protected crash. The idea, though is that you have to let go, be free, to raise your vibration to the point. And in order to raise your vibration, it has to be a purposeful decision to raise your vibration. But you have to be able to raise your vibration to the point where you get all the way over here into the falling head over heels, divinely in love, honeymoon level of true depth of love. And the moment you see it starts swinging to the left, just a little bit. You don't let it swing all the way over here. Just the moment you see it swinging left a little bit, boom! You hit that vibration. You put the gas on the pedal. You come up to your mate and say, hey, it was, mm. you know, honey, it's been like two days. We haven't like had a deep kiss or a deep conversation. What's going on? There's some problems at work. Are you stressed out about anything? Did I do something? What is it? What's going on? You know, what's the problem? Okay, how can we fix it? Let's, let's, sit. let's, let's go into the room with no TV and let's sit down, candlelight, glass of wine, let's talk about how we can find a common resolution to whatever this situation is. Calmly, peacefully, with love, not in anger, or what's wrong with you? Why, why, why are you acting out or holding on to something and not saying it? And weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks go by and you let it build up and then all of a sudden there's this massive explosion of anger and emotion. Instead, see, you're letting it swing all the way to the left instead of keeping the vibration, polarizing it. The law of neutral neutralization, neutralizing it right there keeping a little small swings from the far right from the far right you haven't made love in like a week what's going on let's have a conversation not be frustrated not be mad let's have a conversation when i was younger that was an anger conversation it took some maturity some time for me to realize that that's not how you communicate with somebody when you're going through a situation like that that you have to come to them lovingly, peacefully, try to discover why. But when you discover why, then how are we going to work through it? And then as you're working through it, you have to be able to see the improvements. See, the other person got to realize that as well. You got to see the improvements. You can't sit up there and say, we're going to keep working on it, 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 we're going to keep working on it. And there are no improvements? No. Nah. If things actually start going the other way and keep swinging to the left and you're supposed to be working on them, what kind of work are you really doing? Got to ask yourself them questions. And if a person is not doing that, if things keep swinging to the left and not going to the right, and yet their vibration is not increasing to bring you to the right, you really have to ask the question, does that person really love you? Do they really love you? Because they probably didn't, and they probably don't. And it's a hard thing to accept, but it's a reality. I'd rather know the true reality of somebody not loving me, but being trying to be with me, than somebody loving me. And, and, and I, I want them to love me. If you don't love me, but you're still trying to be with me, I don't want your false love. I don't want your false love love. I want your real love. And if you can't give it to me, that's fine. You go have your life, I'll go have my life. And I hope the best for you. And I hope that you win. I hope that you have such a divine love that fits you perfectly. That y'all are two different pieces of the puzzle that fit perfectly together. I hope that that's what you have. Because that's what I 
must have in my life. And I hope that you want to have that in your life. And if you do, then you got to put forth the work every day, purpose-driven decision to ensure that you have not only found your divine soulmate, but you can keep your divine soulmate. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.